Assalamu alaikum guys, right now we're raising money for the homeless brothers and sisters in Gaza due to the bombings, they've lost their houses, they need food, they need supplies, they need essentials and there is a team on the ground on behalf of the charity Humanity Care Relief that are distributing aid in the middle of the war zone so please donate as generously as possible at the link below so we can get the aid to those who are in need of it ASAP so then you have to ask yourself when you're out there protesting and when you're out there smoking weed drinking fornicating watching pornography doing bid'ah shirk which is worse than all of that which i've mentioned prior are you perhaps responsible for some of the bloodshed it's so easy to get riled up walk to your local tube station get on a train go to central london you know holding a banner screaming shouting it makes you feel like, like you've design. done something Do you get it like emotionally it makes you feel like I'm making change. He said, Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we are a people, we fight our enemies through our actions, meaning your obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your following of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is what's going to defeat your enemy. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'ad, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to another episode of Chai with my bai. It has been a very long time since we last released. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea how long it's been? I think since January. So obviously as you guys know, we lost our studio, alhamdulillah. We have now found another spot, but we're just getting some work done on the inside because... You know, there's some damp and mold and other things like that. So, uh, lack of electricity getting... and yeah. So basically, we're just getting <laughs> that sorted. Actually, they do have electricity, don't they? We have electricity. There's but not a lot of plugs. Not a lot of plugs there, so yeah. Um, and hopefully, inshallah, by the end of July, we should be in there. Inshallah, mm -hmm. recording properly. We just in the meantime find a temporary spot to do our recordings. So, alhamdulillah, for that. Now. So, today's episode, obviously a lot has happened recently and um, we wanted to record this a lot earlier but Qadrullah, as I mentioned due to... Oh, by the way, Saad, hi. Hi, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu where you been? Uh, busy. Okay, Allah Baraka. So, um, yeah, so obviously this is something that we wanted to record a very, very long time ago but Qadrullah, due to time and COVID restraints and other things like that, we weren't able to but now, Alhamdulillah, we are and that is the issue of Palestine. Now, obviously, this is a very deep an intricate issue and there are a lot of different angles to tackle this from um, many of which I believe Imran you've already covered in khutbas that you've done that are online as well and other videos live so on and so forth uh, but hopefully today we'll be covering it from a couple of different angles that haven't yet been uh, addressed so first of all yeah because we, as with any issue it's very very important to get to the root of the problem right there's no point like if someone's if someone's uh, uh, bleeding out, yeah, but it's because of a bullet that's going inside and the bullet's still inside them, rather than just putting a plaster on it, plaster will stop the bleeding out, but this will be bleeding on in the inside. Why? Because you haven't addressed the root of the problem, right? So what's the root cause for what's happening in Palestine? Can we even say that there is a root cause? Do we know if there's a root cause? Is it a dunya cause? Is it a political cause? Is it a religious cause? Why is what's happening in Palestine happening? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqa wa qawli Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum salam So look, the first thing in order to answer this question You have to work out what perspective you're looking at it from Are we looking at it from the perspective of our enemies? Um, then the person will say the root cause is You know, the fact that, you know, Britain uh, you know, after the sykes pico agreement gave the land away to the Zionists and then, you know, the Zionists have taken over the land and since then they've been oppressing, you know, and so on and so forth. Or are you looking at it from, you know, um, a, uh, a more empowering perspective? And the more empowering perspective is a perspective when you don't look at your enemies, but you look at yourself and you say to yourself, what did I do wrong here? What did I do that could have? That could have brought about a better affair. I remember there was something that one older brother advised me many years ago, which, to be honest, I thought was profound advice, and I took it on since then. He said, "You know, you can't change the way people behave, but the only way you can change is how you react to their behavior." And that's deep because if some people are going to be the way they are, some people are just bad mannered, and you know, you really can't do anything to change their manners. 
But the best that you can do is how you react and how you deal with their manners. Does that make sense? So we've seen that these people, these people are, these people are savages. These people are savages. And Allah has described them in the Quran as people that uh, disrespected Allah. They killed prophets. You just really have to fathom that for a second, you know. They cut Zakaria alayhi salam in half and Yahya alayhi salam, they chopped his head off. They killed prophets en masse. They called Allah faqir. They said Allah is poor and we are rich. Allah said Allah had the statement of the ones who said that Allah is poor and they are rich. So they took away from Allah completeness and they ascribed to Allah deficiency whilst ascribing completeness to themselves. So these are people that are savage. Does that make sense? They're known to spill blood. They're known to do this. Um, so we know they're not going to change. The question is how can we change our behavior that will bring about victory uh, and that's quite empowering because instead of begging at the doors of the kuffar who s started this problem i.e you know the british and the zionist yehud that are carrying on the problem currently instead of hoping for them to stop hoping for them to realize hoping for them to wake up there's something that you could do internally that could bring about change allah as he said in the quran inna allaha la yughayyiru ma biqawmin Allah doesn't change the state of a people until they change themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually telling you that if you change yourself, I'll bring you victory. And the Quran and Sunnah addresses from many angles. The Prophet sallallahu told us that a time will come where the different nations will gang up on the Muslims and they will call and invite each other to, 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 on the Muslims the way you would invite people to feast on a meal. Imagine I call all my friends and say, yo, 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 and we have a nice, I don't eat chicken, but imagine I do. We have a nice plate of chicken in front of us, juicy. We say, yo, come eat. And everyone is around. They've been fasting all day. They're hungry. Mm. They're about to go in. Yeah. And the companions, they asked the Prophet, Ali Sassam, they said, will it, will it be because we're weak in number that day? Makes sense. The Prophet, yeah. But the Prophet said, no, you're going to be a lot that day. It's going to be a lot of you. But they're still going to gang up on you. Again, it shows you again, numbers don't bring victory. It's not about how many people that turn up to your protest, how many numbers you get on the petition, how much awareness you raise in the public. The numbers have never been a reason for the victory to come. It's very clear because here the Prophet is saying, rather you'll be a lot. There'll be a lot of you. It's like, I'm confused. How? Why? The Prophet said, but you will be like the froth on the sea. You know, the, you know the, if you've ever gone to the sea uh, and gone to the ocean, you notice that there's like this ugly foam that builds on the sea it's called froth and it doesn't look nice it, it's not the bubbles it's like the froth that like it's, it's ugly it's the, like the filth of the sea so you'll be like that as in the big mighty ocean but you're just like the filth like that's how that's how you are and the prophet explained why because in that your enemies will not have fear of you anymore why won't they have fear because the prophet said wahan has entered your hearts what is wahan the companions yeah, asked the prophet wahan. said it's fear of death and love of the dunya you don't want to die. You want to live. You just want this world. Um, Does that make sense? You want the women. You want the cars. You want the power. You want the respect. That's what you want. So is a deficiency in your deen. The Prophet Ali Sassam is telling you, it's not because your enemies are strong that they overpowered you. It's because your heart became weak. Now the hadith the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told us that there will be okay. certain major sins that we will abandon. That we will abandon. Well, that we will fall, sorry, the major sins we will do will fall into Ina, which is a type of you know deceptive riba who will you know follow the dunya who grab the tail of the cow of, 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 of the cow we will be pleased with you know our agriculture, our, our agriculture. and then taraktum and you will leave of jihad fi sabilillahi azza wa jal or kama qal then the prophet said when this happens sallatallahu alaykum dhullan or Allah will place humility over Allah will place humility over you. You'll be humiliated. Look at us humiliated, Akhi. Our children get bombed, we can't do anything. Our women are getting widowed. Our women are getting killed now. Our men are getting, you know, uh, left without their wives. You hear now a man, his wife, his children, everyone but one baby died. We can't do nothing. And what Akhi, what's happening in China is worse. They're in concentration camps. This is bullen, humiliation. Yeah, Kashmir, uh, Rohingya, all around the world. Yeah, look at Rohingya Muslims. Akhi. They got moved out, ethnically cleansed, Akhi, in Burma, and now they're in refugee camps in, in Bangladesh. 
Okay, and this is constantly happening. We can't do anything. It's humiliation. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told you that Allah Azza wa Jal will not uplift this humiliation from you hatta until you come back. Tarju'u, come back. Hatta tarju'u ila, li, ila, ila deenikum. Until you come back to your religion. It's coming back to the deen is the solution that was of given course, by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course. But there are obviously... So, because just because you mentioned one point um, regarding raising awareness and processing and so on and so forth, are you saying that raising awareness doesn't play a part? In no, not at all. I'm not saying it doesn't play a part. Because we raise awareness, do we not? I mean, we're raising awareness right now, right? That's look, what I'm saying. Look, look, look. There are some things that are foundational, and some things that are sub branches. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Like, for example, when you're fighting in battle, a sword is not a foundational sub branch because there were companions who didn't have weapons to fight in Badr. Yeah, like in, they fought branches. And, yeah. They fought. They had iman. Look, like for example, having soldiers in your army, having numbers, is that beneficial? Yeah. But it's not foundational. Why? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told you, told us that yoma hunayn id a'jabatkum kathratukum. The day of Hunayn, you were amazed by your number, ten thousand companions. But it didn't benefit you anything, did it? Allah said, because the arrows when they started raining down, the army started to retreat, because some of the companions thought that today we're not going to lose because of our number. So Allah told you it's not about number in, in battle of Badr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدَرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّ Allah said we give you victory in Badr whilst you are weak You are weak in Badr إِذْ تَقُولُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِ لَأَلَيْ يَكْفِيَكُمْ أَيُّ مِدَّكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِثَلَاثَةِ آلَافٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُنْزَلِينَ Allah said when you said to the, to the, to the believers Allah is going to send down 3,000 angels Allah said بَلَا إِن تَصْبِرُ وَتَتَّقُوا Allah said rather if you're, if you're patient and you have taqwa وَيَأْتُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْرِهِمْ هَذَا يُمْدِدُكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِخَمْسَةِ آلَافٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُسَّوِّمِينَ Allah will send down 5,000 angels after Allah told you that in case you thought the victory is going to come from the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He told us very crystal clearly and categorically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said وَمَا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بُشْرَى لَكُمْ Allah didn't send these angels except that it was a glad tiding for you and so your hearts can feel good The angels are there to make you feel good Relax, don't worry, Allah is on your side But the victory didn't come from anyone except for Allah Does that make sense? Allah negated the victory coming from the angels If the victory is not coming from the angels that are fighting with you And it's not coming from the weapons that are in you Or the numbers that are with you The victory is not coming from anyone except Allah Does that make sense? So raising awareness is good, it's a tool But raising awareness Whilst you're smoking weed, you're high, you're drunk, you're with your girlfriend, you're not dressed appropriately. You know, it's actually shocking. Imam Ibn Qayyim has a book called Turuq al Hukmiya. It's a book about Islamic governance and how to run an Islamic government. You know, what he mentions, you think in a book about Islamic governance and poli you know, Islamic politics and not democratic politics, yes, it's a sharia, which is different. It's not these kind of people's politics, but it's real, you know, like as in how to run a government and whatnot. And the affairs of a country And he talks about One of the things that brings a country down And destroys a country is what? Sins He said it's free mixing with men and women mm. He said there's never a time When men and women start to free mix in a country Except that it brings it down So you're trying to bring Palestine up Whilst free mixing Okay, let me free mixing, you're talking about protests Yeah, yeah. As, in, you know, men and, as, in, as in like If you've understood that the victory is going to come from Allah I appeal to you well, like, I saw a video that broke my heart When I People try to make it out like the majority of people at the protests are practicing and praying this Allah on time. Like, well, like the majority of videos of the protests I saw, I would struggle to actually... This, And I'm not saying that there wasn't hijabis. I'm sure there was many hijabis. Like, but there was videos that I saw, I couldn't even see a single hijabi. To me, it seemed like it was out on Eid. You know when we go to South or Broadway, we give that on Eid. Yeah. And all of the hij not, uh, girls are not wearing hijab and the guys are riding their cars up and down with the flags and the music is blazing. So are you saying that uh, sisters who don't wear hijab can't raise awareness for Palestine. I'm not saying they can't raise awareness, but what I'm trying to say to them is that they have. Is, what I'm trying to say to them is that number one, you sister, with all due respect, are not the person that victory is expected from. You brother are not the person victory is expected from because you're so brother, asking. You're talking about a person, for example, sin. trousers below the ankles, yeah. shaved beard, shaved beard, not praying, missing their prayers, listening to music, because Allah, because Allah is trying to tell you victory comes from Allah. Allah doesn't give victory to those who are disobeying, disobeying Him. Even in the Quran, Allah SWT, he says in Surah Al-Rum that evil and corruption, which is what we see today in yeah. Palestine, Kashmir, all these other countries, has spread throughout the lands because of what? Because of what the hands of men have done. Yeah. Meaning because of what our own hands have done. And the scholars have explained this if you look into the tafsir, that this means the sins 
of the people. Yeah. So because of our sins, yeah. this is the reason why evil and corruption spread throughout the land. So yeah, the I'm only sure. way to, like I said, you always have to go back to the root of the problem. You yeah. can't just address the symptoms. If you address yeah. the symptoms, you're not, you, you know, the person will never get better. Yeah. The situation will never get better. So likewise, you know, and this is the same thing that you've mentioned before about Allah won't change the situation of people until they change yeah. themselves. Again, those hadith go back to your religion, meaning when you leave your religion and you indulge in sins and the dunya and all of this, then humiliation will come upon you. And the only way to uplift it is to let go of the sins and come back. And, and you know that's deep is that when you look at the ayah, Allah says, Allah says, corruption is spread in the land and the sea because of what the people have done. So this shows you that our sins are transitive. What that means is that our sins, they have an effect that goes beyond us. Meaning if you sin, it's not just you will face that problem of the sin, but because remember the ummah is one body. So if one part of the body feels pain, the rest of the body feels pain. But if one part of the body commits a crime, the whole body is going to jail now. Is there any evidence for that? Because so, someone, so, someone might be thinking, wait, so, but I thought that's a Christian thing where one person can no, save the rest and one no, person can destroy no, the rest. No, no, no. Aren't Muslims all accountable no, for themselves? No, they believe every, as in, as in they, Christians believe you're guilty for the sin of this man. They believe that Adam and Hawa did a sin and we all are weighing the burden of the sin. No, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Allah Anyone who does a sin, he earned it for himself. One person will bear the burden of the sin of the as in you have, as in that sin is on your scale. But the consequence and the punishment of that sin, like we've got many evidences that show that that the sin, if you do it, okay, I am innocent. Like remember the hadith the Prophet said that there will be an army that will come and you know it will be destroyed and it will be swallowed, and they're trying to attack the Kaaba, and those who are innocent, they'll be resurrected on the intention. Because they're there at the time with the army, they're all getting destroyed. Because that's the army that's going to do evil. So the point is that this ayah shows that if a person is sinning, Allah says, Allah says, corruption spread in the land and the sea. Akhi, the fish is in this, feel the effect of your sins. Let alone oh. our brothers in Palestine. That's why the hadith of uh, in the oh. Muslim Imam Ahmad or of the student of knowledge, the Prophet ﷺ said that when a person, when a talib ilm, when a student of knowledge, a person who's seeking knowledge is walking and he's, 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 to, he's taking a path to seek knowledge, the angels in the heavens make dua for him, the ant in the burrow, and even the fish in the sea. Why is the fish making dua for the student of knowledge? Because knowledge combats ignorance, and ignorance is the reason for sins. In another verse in Surah An Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, In uh, in uh, Allah said, In the Matoba to Allah, he did Oh, every person does the sin is a jahil. Even if he knows, he's still a jahil. He's not implementing his knowledge. So sins come from jah jahala, from, 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 from ignorance. And the person who's seeking knowledge, is combating ignorance. So sins come from ignorance. The person seeking knowledge is combating ignorance. So then the fish who's in the sea is making dua for the student of knowledge. Why? Because it feels the corruption of the sin based on ignorance. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm saying, what don't, so then of course our Palestinian brothers are going to be affected by our sins. Does that make sense? So then you have to ask yourself, when you're out there protesting and when you're out there smoking weed, drinking, fornicating, watching pornography, doing bid'ah shirk, which is worse than all of that, which I've mentioned prior, you have to ask yourself, are you perhaps responsible for some of the bloodshed, maybe not in Palestine, but Kashmir, or maybe Aleppo, or maybe what, Mali, or maybe what, China? Does that make sense? And there's many evidence, like for example, the hadith of Sahih Bukhari, when the Prophet ﷺ gave the example of the, sh of the ship. He said that there are people, there are two decks on the ship. Hadith of Sahih Bukhari, okay? mm -hmm. there are two decks on the ship. There's the top deck and the bottom deck. The bottom ones go to the top and ask them for, for water. And then one day they say, because remember the ones at the top can pull the water out of the sea, right? And mm -hmm. So they go to the ones at the top every time. Can we have water? Can we have water? Can we have water? So one day the ones at the bottom, they have a bright idea, but it's not such a bright idea. They think it's a bright idea. They say, we've, we've stressed and burdened the ones above us. Why keep bugging them? Let's dig a hole in the bottom of the ship. Let's drill a hole so we can get the water ourselves. What's going to happen if they do that? The ship's going to sink. The ship's going to sink, exactly. So the Prophet Ali said, if the ones at the top don't go and stop the ones at the bottom, they will all be destroyed. That's the analogy of the Ummah. That's the analogy of the Ummah. Does that make sense? As in, if we though don't stop the ones that are sinning at the bottom, we'll all be destroyed. There's another hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he, he, he mentioned that uh, uh, when there's going to be, a, uh, you know, one of his wives, it was either Umm Salam or Zainab, she asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah be pleased with both of them, she said, are we going to be destroyed? And there are righteous ones amongst us? 
بروفيسور اذا كثر الخبث او كما قال خبث اذا كثر الخبث او كما قال او كما قال اذا بروفيسور عليه السلام قال if the sins and the filthy ones amongst us are more so if there are more sinners amongst you then even though there's righteous you everyone will get it does that make sense so we have to that's why another hadith of prophet alayhi said you will strike the hand of the dim-witted one the one who's sinning you grab his hand hey what are you doing you're enjoying good you forbid the evil because this is what it comes down to this is the bottom line does that make sense it's the shirk primarily it's the bid'ah and the sins the prophet is telling you that sallallahu alayhi wa that you come with tawheed you come with tawheed you will not only change your affairs and the situation of the Muslimin as a whole, but the Yehud themselves, those people that are known in the tarikh of Islam, in the Quran, from, from, from the, the prophets that came before us, the, the harm and the chaos and the facade that they caused, if people were to just do this one thing, which is unite upon a tawheed, come together upon a tawheed, their wow. effect would have nothing on us whatsoever. There'll be no trace of them for us whatsoever. But then the Prophet Sallallahu said, وَلَكِنَّكُمْ قُثَاءٌ He said, but rather you guys are just scum. You are the, was it, froth of the sea. That's the, it, it's, that, that is all that you guys are. And that's your messenger speaking. So that's all you are. Wallahi, if the people just understood that this Nusra from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will come with Tawheed and nothing else. Wallahi, it's shocking that people want to run away from you know this concept and say how can you talk about tawheed and say mm -hmm. tawheed is the issue and tawheed is the solution people are dying people are dying well it's like actually we don't understand like why did allah create you did allah create you to to defend the muslims did allah create you to get married did allah create you to be friends with people you were created for a purpose one purpose that's the intent behind this creation, which is وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That you won't create it except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not fulfilling it? Ah, you're going to go down a dangerous path. Simple as that. Why expect the help of Allah? Why, accept, uh, why expect the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the victory? If you're not even fulfilling the only reason why you were created. It doesn't make sense. And, and for you to run away from that. Wallahi, it's, and, it's like, and what are you that, running it's, to? It's the fact that we have an eye in the Quran. That's the only thing. It's a real question. Where just going? an example of what he Where mentioned. Where are you going is the question. Just an example of what you mentioned regarding, you know, like, how does that even make sense? How are you going to try? Like, for example, there are a lot of people who no doubt donated to the Palestinian cause. You know, they gave charity. But have you, have you paid your zakat? Like, have you calculated and worked out your something which is obligatory on you, which is, you know, more important then obviously that money could also go to the Palestinians but a lot of people just give normal charity but they haven't maybe their whole life I know people who their whole life haven't given zakat don't even know how to work out the zakat don't even know how to pay so it's like how can you expect to see fruits because it, it's true billions not millions billions have been donated you know the Muslims are known to be from the most generous of all communities you know even the Kufar admit, admit to this if you look at statistics and so on and so forth Billions have, been billions have been donated, you would have thought like it would have had a serious impact. You know, something would have changed, something would have, but you still see the same areas with the same poverty, like with the same poverty levels. Not saying it's not making a difference at all, but saying what is your normal sadaqah going to do when you haven't even fulfilled your obligation? One of the five pillars of Islam, you haven't even come with that. How can you expect that? Did you get it? And, and the point is that, you know, because we didn't necessarily explain what tawheed is for the people, right? As in Tawheed is to worship Allah alone. And there's levels to it. The first foundational level is that you don't call upon anyone else besides Him. You don't pray or worship anyone else besides Him. But then you can make your Tawheed deficient by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because part of worshiping Allah is to obey Him. And every time you choose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're placing your own desires or another human being uh, equal to Allah or above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's a deficiency in your Tawheed where you might not have fell into complete shirk and kufr but you've got a deficiency in your tawheed and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Afara'ayta man itakhadha ilahahu hawa Have you not seen the one who worships his desires? He took himself, his desires as a god so if you can't leave music behind you know and, and I just want to mention something yeah? so Sa'ad mentioned a hadith which is in the context because there's, there's ayat and a hadith that talk about tawheed in the context of general victory against 
whoever your enemy might be. But he mentioned a hadith which is specifically in the context of the Yehud. And it shows you that the ones who are Ahlu Tawheed, they're not the people of Shia, not the grave worshippers, not going to be the Barelvis. It's not going to be Shia. It's not going to be the Shia. It's not going to be the Shia that are going to give victory. People are out there saying, you know, Hamas being supported by the Shias. When well, I want to talk about the issue of Hamas, if we get time, Shias don't ever get twisted. Anyone who's got these grave worshippers, the victory is not going to come from them. It's going to come from where? It's going to come from people of Tawheed. And they're not the one who are doing these sins because where the Tawheed is deficient. Does that make sense? But there's a hadith that indicates that the ones who are going to get victory are the people who follow the Sunnah and the manhaj of the Salaf as well. And it's in the context of Bayt al Maqdis. Beautiful hadith. But the Prophet وسلم, said, and before I tell you the hadith, we've all heard about, uh, you know, the, the ta'ifa min surah, the hadith, you know, la yazalu ta'ifa min ummati zahirin al haq, ta'ifa min surah. Or come call different variations of the same hadith. We've seen it, right? That there will always be a group from this ummah that Allah will give victory to. You have to understand that this, this hadith, ta'ifa min surah, um, it's going to be very you know, long to go into it right now, but I've done it in other videos and I'll perhaps maybe link below. I think it's the second or third lesson from uh, Manhaj Mondays. But th this is the name for the same group, the saved sect. So Ahlul Sunnah, another name for Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is Al Ghuraba, the strangers. Another name for them is Al Hadith, the people of Hadith. And another name for them is As Salafiyun. Another name for them is Ta'ifa Mansura, which is the ones who are being given victory. Does that make sense? So even though this particular nation I'm going to mention doesn't mention the word Mansura, it mentions Zahirina al Haq. It's the same hadith. It's talking about the same group. And it just takes for a person to spend some time to actually go out there and research it, inshallah ta'ala. So this is a hadith that's talking about the group that is given victory, the group that is apparent on truth that will be given victory. Ila qiyam is sa'a. And to Allah Azza wa Jal inherits the day of judgment. Does that make sense? And Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, when he was asked, and also Imam al Bukhari, Imam Ahmad said, if, said, if this is not the people of a hadith, I don't know who it is, meaning the people of. Hadith, i.e. Sahaba and the students of Sahaba and, you know, so the Salaf basically. It's very long to explain right now. And I'm conscious that there are people with sick hearts and deficient intellects that would like to take this out of context and they're going to take quotes here and there and try it, whatever. And I, I, there, there are different ways that the Salaf explains this Hadith, right? Does that make sense? But at the end of the day, it doesn't negate these explanations that they, it's referring to the people of Hadith, the people of the Sunnah, the Salafian, and I'll link people back to, inshallah, to Allah, the Manhaj Mondays below. So that's, that's we know that that Hadith talks about that. This is a variation of that Hadith, talking about the, the group that Allah will give victory to. And look at what uh, what um, what is said. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي على الدين ظاهرين لي لعدوهم. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they will always remain a group from this Ummah that will be apparent on their deen. People of deen. People of deen. People of the deen. They're not people of sins. They're not people of shirk. They're not people of bid'ah. They're people on the deen. The correct deen. Does that make sense? And they will be the ظاهرين لعدوهم. عفوا أمتي على الدين. They'll be upon their deen. ظاهرين على عدوهم. عدوهم. They'll be apparent over their, apart over their enemies. The companions, they ask. They said, Ya Rasulullah, وَأَيْنَ هُمْ? Where are they? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they by Jerusalem. Does that make sense? Mm. So what you want to understand from that is that the ones who are going to give victory to Bayt al-Maqdis are the ones who are apparent on their deen. The ones who are upon the sunnah who follow the Ahlul Hadith. This word, I don't like to use it in this context because it confuses people. Salaf. But it's the same thing. When Imam Ahmed said, if this hadith is not talking about Ahlul Hadith, I don't know who it's talking about. The Salaf People of the Hadith Who follow the Hadith Does that make sense? So watch that video Manhaj Manis It will explain it to you So this talking And, and I literally want to make Mention here like, So 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 it's not no. That's what we titled this You know uh, Makeup artist frees Palestine Question mark Because there's no makeup artist As in In the uh, When I say makeup I'm talking about the ones Who are doing tabarruj And showing their beauty And makeup And doing protests In tights And listening to music Or a guy who's coming And shouting and screaming Who's going to free Palestine It's not going to happen It's not possible I can tell you certainty You know why? Because the, these hadith are certain These ayat are certain The victory is going to come From the people of Tawheed And the people of the Sunnah It's not going to come From people of Shirk It's not going to come From people of Bidah If it's not going to come From sinners It's definitely going to come From Mubtadiyah It's definitely going to come From Mushrikeen Does that make sense? So just on that point Because you mentioned something I just want to uh, address it Because I feel like A lot of people Are going to take it out of context or they might misunderstand you and it might be a good idea for whoever's going to make IGTV clips for this video to 
pu- pull out all the relevant parts regarding this issue of because you mentioned you know regarding like influencers for example who might not necessarily be you know wearing the correct hijab or so on and so forth and everyone has you know issues but does that mean that they then can't because imagine like someone who they might actually have a good heart like, i actually feel bad for what's happening but i actually really want to help yeah, of like course, yeah. I want to raise awareness. Okay, cool. I might not go to a protest. Does it mean like because I don't wear hijab because I'm a sinner? Like because I do that sin publicly, does that mean now that I can't post about what's happening about it or I can't you know try and show support in some sort of way? Because it's like you know like imagine if someone themselves smokes, does that mean now I can't tell someone else? Oh, listen, don't smoke. It's haram. It's bad for you. Like, do you, do you, do you get what I'm trying to ask? As in, no, but we, that, that's not. That's not. That look, no. Like I said to you at the beginning, that these are all means that we can take that mm. are nice. As, uh, protests haram. It's not permissible. There's no, and we can link. Yeah, we can put videos. protesting to one side. Yeah. Like, I'm talking posting. about like, just generally, like you know. Yeah. Or does, does that mean I can't make dua for Palestine? No, no of course you can. But what I want you to understand is this: I never said that you can't do that, and it's good for you to do that. But like, just if you're bleeding out from a bullet, wound, focus on the main thing. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, if imagine you come to a doctor, and you were suffering from a migraine, but then you got bullet wound in your chest. He can give you all of the. Uh, paracetamol for your migraine You're going to die Unless he He so the, bullet, the, 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 bullet the bullet wound in your chest So my point is that Look you can And no one's going to tell you no And no one's ever going to tell you you're wrong To raise awareness As long as, long as you don't do anything wrong Or post anything haram uh, And don't say anything haram But for raising awareness No one's going to Criticize you for that But you will not have an effect I'll tell you that right now Unless, unless you're working on yourself Unless you're working on yourself Unless you're working yourself And to be honest There are times when, For example There's a hadith Sunnah Tirmidhi I should never say never There is a hadith Sunnah Tirmidhi Where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Said so. That you know the Perhaps Allah Azza wa Jal Will give victory to the deen Or guide someone I can't remember the exact word In the hadith I'm paraphrasing That Allah will bring someone Closer to the deen Through a fasiq Through a sinner So you may benefit The Palestinians But you didn't benefit yourself though hmm. So what point What point is there That you save someone else From the hellfire But you didn't save yourself so and 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 and, and, the, and that's an exception, by the way. The rule of thumb is you will not make change. The rule of thumb is you will not have an effect. You will not be able to help this ummah unless you change yourself, because we are one body. And Allah gives victory. Allah decrees. Allah Allah decrees. Allah says, "Qulillahumma malik al-mulk." Allah He owns the kingdom. Tutil mulka man tasha. He gives the kingdom who He wills. Wa tanzi'ul mulka min man tasha. He takes it from who He wills. Allah is in control of this. And right now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Whether you like it or not Okay He doesn't He hasn't given the kingdom And the dominion to the Muslims Like that We have been placed Humiliation under us And Allah has done this So we can wake up And learn our true purpose in life So perhaps we'll struggle a bit in this world So we don't have to struggle In the akhirah and hellfire for the eternity Wake up O Muslims You know what that, that, well, that shows Something crazy Is because You know As you mentioned Posts and so on and so forth Without You know Any real uh, striving towards the deen behind them from the individual won't, re- won't won't make a difference. Why? Because that's not the root cause is the sins that you're doing. Whereas nowadays it's funny because this, this discussion came up quite recently regarding you know should influencers and this that you know be posting about you know the, and uh, uh, there's this you know counterculture going around where a lot of people are calling out influencers and this like, oh, why aren't you posting and this that one blah, blah blah. When let's just say. For theoretically, I'm not saying this is the situation, but theoretically, that person, they're working on themselves. They're making dark behind the scenes. No one knows Allah Alam. You know, they're f- learning more about their religion. They could be doing all the things that we've mentioned that need to be done. But because you don't see a post from them, you now, you know, social justice warrior. And that's it. Well, it's a big, it's a disease these days that people have in their hearts that, you know, oh, and at the end of the day, that person doesn't even need to post. Of course, because uh, I remember we were having discussions and you mentioned that you know there are some people who don't post because of a brand deal that they're worried about and stuff mm. like that. And but I think that you you don't know what's in a person's heart. You do, you don't know the true reasons why you, someone's you doing know, something. You know, actually, upon pondering this, I actually was thinking it would be actually better if they did, if if I'm not saying they didn't post. It's better if we don't even look at the, or expect these influencers to talk because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that amni awil khawfi bihi. ولو رد ولو إلى إلى الرسول وإلى أول الأمر منهم لعلمه الذين يستنبطونه منهم. Allah said that when issues of safety and security happen, you people go and spread it. Every you know every Bakr Amr Zaid, every every random guy starts spreading it. These are issues of safety and security. People's blood, people's lives and wealth and property, and you who don't know or have you know maybe. 
failing simple you're failing your relationship <laughs> you don't know you're not managing your own relationship in your house and you want to talk about issues of safety and security oh, I said if only they took you back to the messenger and the people of knowledge they would have told you what to do so actually we shouldn't even as in yeah it, it, it is nice for people to spread awareness and whatnot yeah. but to do it in the correct way yeah, but to do it and you don't have any like for example because like for example there was one guy and I'm not going to mention his name because you know Allah Alam if uh, he uh, if he's accurate but when I looked it did seem pretty accurate but there's like this big Islamic personality like big Islamic personality and, and he apparently didn't address this issue at all like he didn't address it directly he kind of just as like a side comment he made it and maybe he'd address it after I don't know but he was getting pressure people in my comments saying call out this man call out this man you know he's one of these alleged you know people that are seen as people of knowledge I was actually quite happy that he didn't speak about it. You know why? Because mm. he would have probably said some stupid stuff. We need to unite and hold hands and sing Kumbaya. That's the kind of thing that you probably expect from these jokers. Does that make sense? I'm Barakalafiq. You didn't talk, bro. And he might have been worried, maybe, maybe. He might have been worried for his own, you know, am I going to get visa into this country? Am I going to get in? Am I going to, you know, I have to be careful what I say, you know, can't. You know, speak against the Zionists because the people that allow me into the countries are like, Allah, maybe, or maybe, maybe he's as you said, he was begging on rise. Whatever. whatever. I'm happy he didn't talk. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy he didn't talk. Now, for example, like some people are talking and it's like saying the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because when you talk, when you post based on ignorance, yeah, you might do more damage yeah. than help. Why? Because you're you don't know what you're saying. Like you're saying, yeah, attend this protest or, you know, this, that, whatnot. Or, you know, you might call upon someone other than Allah in, in your post to say that, you know, grant victory to the Palestinians or whatever. Like, for example, like the, the person who is who has been taken as a scholar for the Ikhwanis is Yusuf al-Qardawi. Yeah. He put up a tweet saying, where are the Muslims? Where are the Muslim countries? The leaders. The yeah. leaders, the armies or something like that, you know. Why are they not living in Paris? Again, basically he's trying to call for an uprising, this, that, whatever have you. And someone dropped him a tweet, which was, Wallahi, I think this tweet, living in the day and age we live in, the, the, living in this day and age, should be memorized, Wallahi. The tweet, the response, the context, everything, the history behind it. The tweet said, the people are, because he said, where are the Muslims, right? Where are they? Why are they not liberating Palestine? He said, where are they? He said, they're too busy recovering from the civil war that was mm. created on the back of your fatawa in the Arabic, Arab Spring. When you said, uprise against the rulers, do this, do this, mm. do this, do this. It was you bludgeon. weakened the Muslim you nations. The Muslims. And now when they're not able to, you know, to, to support the Palestinians, you are saying, oh, where are they? Yeah. Now, for example, it was sad. You hear some of the Muslim rulers that were... It's literally like shooting someone. They're like, oh, what happened? Yeah. Like, what happened? You, you can't what fight. Happened? Why are not backing me, bro? You died? You, you took my leg out, G. I just shot you in the head. That's like, it. You know what's sad? There was, there was one of the Muslim rulers. And, uh, you know, we asked Allah Israel, when there is khair, to give them strength. And he was like kind of calling the other Muslim countries to back him. But bro, it's like deafening silence. You know why? All they can do is behind the clothes and behind the scenes or whatever. Effort. Because, bro, I'm not saying every country, but not every country, but I'm just saying a lot of the countries or the ummah has been weakened. But imagine, akhi, if Yemen wasn't going through what it's going through right now and Syria wasn't going through what it's going through now, maybe Allah, maybe Allah would have overthrown Bashar al-Assad uh, another way. Mm. May, 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 maybe something would have happened and, you know what I'm saying, a Muslim would have, as in, you know what I'm saying? Imagine Tunisia, as in, as in you're, Libya, thinking, all these countries. you're thinking already they were bad because of the rulers they had. You don't know what Allah would have done, but mm. now they're worse. Yeah. Now we know one thing Is that they're definitely worse yeah. So even if there was a chance They're worse now So it's like someone might be calling Saying yo help And it's deafening silence Where are they? Because you told them Go and You know And fight And rebel And this that and the other And we've lost hundreds I you know it's because of The whole ISIS issue They were brothers When we started practicing That was the creme De la creme In London Dead and buried now Because they went and joined ISIS they got confused. The point, the point is that these brothers were the creme de la creme. And actually, where are they now? Dead and buried. You know why? Because they had the fatah of these people that appealed to people's emotions. So I'm actually kind of happy that they didn't that's talk. The no, 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 no. I said, that's the thing. Isn't it? it's, an, it's an emotional thing. Yeah. Like, it's so easy to get riled up, walk to your local tube station, get on a train, go to central London, you know, holding a banner, screaming, shouting. It makes you feel like, like you've design. done something. Do you get it? Like, emotionally, it makes you feel like... I'm making change. But to flip it on yourself and be like, oh, I need to stop listening to music. Oh, 
I need to break up my boyfriend or I, I need to, to break pray. up my girlfriend. I need to start praying. I need to stop doing bidah. I need to stop p- praying as a god. Like to flip it on yourself and think, okay, cool, me doing this is gonna. It's like it's not the like I don't know what the word for it is, but it's, it's not like the most for a person's logic. It, it kind of I can understand why people struggle to understand that mm. like me helping myself. How's that going to help them? Whereas me protesting, doing all these things, but it's not about what you think. As you know, uh, Ali Radha Lahan he said that this religion, it's not a religion. It's not about what you think. It's not about your logic. If it was, then when we do myself over our socks, instead of doing it over the top of the sock, you would do it under the bottom. Why? Because the bottom the of your sock day. is the what is the part that gets dirty. You when you're walking, unless you got some mad feet. Your, you know, it's not gonna be the front of your feet that are touching the the ground. It's gonna be the bottom of your feet, right? So when you wipe, why is it that you wipe the the top of your feet? Why is it that you wipe the top of your feet and not the bottom of your feet? Because it's not about logic. That's just the way we were told. That's what we were told to do. Likewise, in this situation, as you mentioned, all those evidences, Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam already gave us the answer. Why are we even going? Like, let's just say, even for argument's sake, yeah, and, and, say, and Allah's the one in control, by the way. Let's just say, for, for for argument's sake, let's just say, for argument's sake, that protesting was permissible. Let's just say, for argument's sake, let's say, for argument's sake, that every single person there was fully segregated. Which, by the way, uh, you know, uh, I have yet to see a single photo or a single picture. You know, I've been to protest myself back in 2011, 12, 13. So we actually, jumped on top of buses. We had, you know, all sorts of madness, was, screaming, outside shouting. Protesting outside the Israeli embassy. Actually. Israeli embassy, BBC. We didn't get any coverage. Like it was, it was a joke. Like, like, but the point that I'm making is, is that let's just say for argument's sake, you know, it's a Sharia compliant protest. Why are you going to that, which is other than that which Allah and the Messenger told us to do in the first place? It's like, imagine your phone breaks and you get a, a, a manual from Apple and it tells you, even though, you know, right to repair, Apple don't give, they don't want you to repair by yourself. That's a whole different discussion. Let's just say Apple gave you a, a manual. This is exactly what you need to do to fix your phone. Let's just say that for argument's sake. And you start watching, you know, next like Tom and Jerry on YouTube, or or, or you just like, you know what, I'm gonna Hawaii. try and freestyle it. Or you listen to Hawaii and what they say about the phone. Yeah, you go to Hawaii, or you know, you just start listening to whatever you feel. You know what? I think this is the problem. I think this is the solution. Like, bro, like, how does that even make sense? That like that doesn't make sense at all. Allah told us exactly do this. This is the reason why this is happening. This is the solution. Do it, and you get victory. So instead of going one, two, three. We're out here at five, six, seven. I'm saying if it was permissible. Like, it doesn't even make sense. And, and, can, and can I just add before we pass it on to Sa'ad? Because we talk about sins, right? But these mubtadi'ah, the people of Bid'ah need to realize the Bid'ah is worse than the sins. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, umuri muhdathatuha. The most evil of affairs is the, is the newly invented matters, i.e. the Bid'ah. Does that make sense? So these mubtadi'ah are a greater problem. Every Ash'ari, every Sufi, every Kharij, every Takfiri, every person, Every one of these people, they are the problem. And you know what it is? Unfortunately, they're not going to wake up. They are not going to wake up. So you Muslims, you people need to be careful and safeguard your aqidah because these people are not going to wake up. The Prophet already told us, the people of innovation, they come out of the religion the way an arrow comes out of a bow. As in, the, the arrow goes forward and doesn't come back. Does that make sense? Very rarely do they make tawbah. So this already know that these t- how these mubtadi'ah are going to behave. Does that make sense? But you need to make sure that you safeguard. Don't listen to these mubtadi'ah. Does that make sense? Sometimes mubtadi'ah are clear cut and sometimes they pretend to be Salafi. But they're Hizbis. Does that make sense? And they divide the Salafis and they attack the Salafis and they actually have al wala al bara based on one sheikh or one group or one whatever. This, this is all the same. You know, all people, they, they are not going to, it's not going to the victory is not going to come from these guys. Does that make sense? So inshallah ta'ala, you guys need to be careful and safeguard and really well, I just wanted to mention because we didn't hammer in the point of bid as much pass on to Saad yeah no no I just um, are we ending up we're fin- wrapping up right yeah yeah okay I just wanted to so I had to finish off by mentioning uh, a statement um, and this is a statement that uh, Al Imam Bukhari he brings a narration actually he brings in his Sahih uh, and it's Mu'allaqan uh, but it's a statement of Abu Darda radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who is a companion from one of the greatest companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he mentioned a statement which I believe honestly sums up everything that we're talking about this whole concept of you know there are problems in the Ummah there are this yani, imtihan there are tests and there are trials and there are fasad and a lot of it really if a person just thinks about it goes back to yourselves the sins the problems that we bring about for ourselves and so he mentioned something um, 
he said Abu Darda radiyallahu ta'ala and he said Nahnu qawman he said we are a people nuqatilu aduwana he said we are a people that fight our enemies we are a people that fight our enemies bi a'malina with our actions subhanallah we fight our enemies through our actions meaning we fight our enemies and we we fight them and we go into battle with them based upon the obedience we have towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your ta'at your obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your following of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is what's going to defeat your enemy why that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran when he said in tansurullah yansurkum if you give victory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will give victory to you what does the victory here mean it means that you fulfill the obligation that's upon you as a Muslim. You fulfill that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked from you as a believer. You do that, Allah will give you victory. It's your a'mal that's going to make a difference. The Quran says it. The Sunnah says it. The Sahaba said it. What else does a person want? What else does a person need in terms of baraheen and adilla and hujjah to know that this is the way for a person to find success in his life? To find success through all of the problems and the fitting and the facade that we see? Your a'mal, your actions. You know what's deep about that? Is Abu Dharla radiallahu anhu is a man who fought in battle. It's a man who fought. It's not a person who's trying to run away from battle and saying, sit on home, pray. No, he's a man who fought in battle alongside the Prophet Islam and they were victorious. They conquered the Arabian Peninsula. They conquered Persia. They conquered Rome. These men, they conquered. They conquered this known world or the known world at the time. And he's telling you, we did it based on obedience to Allah So if you're not going to take it from there You're not going to take it from anyone And I just want to mention Because I, I didn't mention at the end We could end on this And that's why people need to stop You know Like understand for example Like with regards to like Palestine right now Like Hamas right now Is a is a is is an organization And I'm not I'm, I'm not going by um, By uh, what the media And what the West say about them But I'm giving you the Islamic perspective on them They're organizations that are Heavily, you know, mixed up with the Shia. You've got the Hezbollah from Lebanon. The concept of Hezbollah is Hezbollah. They're not part of Allah Israel. The party of you know, Hezbollah Shaitan, and you know, you've got Iran, and they're all mixed up. And you have to know something that uh, this is very something. This is very. I, as in, a Muslim shouldn't get fooled by these things. You know, a Muslim may actually start to think, ah, uh, oh, does that mean the Shia are on our side? And the Shia actually giving victory to the brothers and sisters in Hamas, in Gaza. As in a person who studies the Aqidah will never make that blunder. They'll always know something's fishy here. Something's fishy here. You know why? Because all you need to know is that you know the way that the Yehud, the Yehudi Zionists are behaving with our Muslim brothers and sisters is bad, right? The Shia are worse. The Yehud, with whatever they're doing, are still Ahl Kitab. I'm not saying they're Muslims, but with what they are, at the end of the day, we're not Ahl Kitab. They have a book. At least they, they have. They're not like the. They're not like. Uh, they're not like the apostates. The Shia are murtadin. That's why the Salaf would say akfar. They say the Rafida are akfar min Yahud wa Nasara. Min Yahud wa Nasara. They would say that the Shia are the the kufr is worse than the kufr. Their disbelief is worse than the disbelief of the Yahud and the Christians. Does that make sense? So now the fact that. These people are annihilating our brothers and sisters, these Yehudi Zionists, annihilating our brother, brothers and sisters in Palestine. And the organization that is at the forefront of it in in in, in Gaza is funded by Allah. And these things are, at the end of the day, I'm only saying it because I heard scholars say, I've heard the media say, I don't take from the media. I look at the Mashaikh, they say that I had the Mashaikh say they got their hand involved. Does that make sense? And it seems to be quite common knowledge and their own spokespeople have come out and said that, yeah, we work with Iran and this, that, whatever have you. Just know that those Shias right there, they're not going to bring good for the Muslims. If anything, we expect from them worse. We expect from them worse than what we expect from them. They've got narrations that they, they mentioned that when they, they say they're waiting for their Mahdi when he comes, they're going to cut the head of all of the Sunnis. They look, they hoping to torture us worse. Does that make sense? So understand that. This is the issue that lies in. I can understand maybe why Iran would do such a thing for propaganda, perhaps, to make themselves look and to confuse the Muslims. Does that make sense? And by the way, Ikhwanis, 
they were the ones who linked up. They they tried to always link the Muslims up with the Shias. This is what Ikhwan Muslim are known for. Does that make sense? They're known to try and link the Muslims up with the Shias to unite them together. And even Yusuf Qardawi, who's one of the main guys who tried to do that, after many years regretted it and said, I, I realize it can't be done. Does that make sense? And the likes of Yasser Qadi who are carrying on that in the West or whatever. So my point is that you have to understand this is deep. It's a very deep issue. Does that make sense? A very deep issue. So uh, yeah, it's not going to come from innovation. It's going to come from Tawheed and Sunnah. So hopefully that, that benefited you guys, inshallah. Barakallah feek for watching. Hope inshallah we'll see you on the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace. I am one of the Humanity Care Relief team in Gaza Strip. We are always in the field to assist the needy people in Gaza, everywhere. See, destruction is everywhere. We are on, now we are on one of the destroyed houses in Gaza. So, Gaza builds you. Gaza builds you. Gaza needs your assistance. There's lots of homeless now in the street, needs shelters. It's hot, needs medicine, beds, food, clothes. Please donate as much as you can. Donate to Mr. Amran Mansour in order to be able to continue our services to the homeless people.